What's up everyone, Thomas here with For Real. Currently, it is only moments after the Oscars have ended and I am so hyped uh, about how this show went that I sent a spontaneous invite out to some friends of mine to see who would like to indulge a conversation about what happened this evening. And I got some takers. So joining me on this call right now, in Vancouver, BC, um, a uh, the blogging and podcasting duo from Awesome Friday. I've got Matt Simpson and Simon Best on the line to chat about Oscars. <laughs> Guys, hello. say hi really Thanks quick. Yeah. Hello, uh, hello. It's a pleasure to be back, as always. Yeah, for sure. And also joining us, uh, the newest writer on the For Real team. I've got Todd on the line as well. Todd, thank you for joining us. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Happy to be here. So... That Oscars show. Let's let's yeah, actually, you know, before I don't know we get why to you the... us in, like, what? Not much happened. So why? Not are you much here? Like, I know it was a very, <laughs> it was a very humdrum two and a half hours, right? Like, they actually, you know, a big surprise is they stayed within their uh, their their time allotment this year. That was kind of cool. Um, but let's before we get into the drama of the Oscar show, um, I'm interested because I'm sure all of us filled out like ballots and predictions and stuff. How many of your predictions were correct? Simon, we'll start with you. Oh, uh, I'm the, the worst person to start with because I have two children, so uh, I don't see any, I don't see anything. I'm yeah. like, well, I I like this actor, and uh, I saw Parallel Mothers, so mm -hmm. I was I wanted Pe Penelope Cruz to win. I thought she was amazing. Um, I really want to see Coda, so I, I wanted that to win. But the uh, any kind of child friendly movie, I can tell you anything you need to know about Encanto. <laughs> there was a lot of drama in my house because in animated it was Encanto and Luca and Raya and Mitchell's versus the Machines and these are like four of my kids favorite movies from the last year so suddenly they were like deep thought like which one do I want to win like wh which one is better than the other one but they were primarily my daughter was very happy about Encanto winning but not with the remix of Bruno but I'm sure we'll mm. get right to that later <laughs> we will talk about that I had I had <laughs> thoughts about that for sure let's pop over to Todd Todd how many of your predictions uh, um, uh happened <laughs> Voof. I actually so I as you know Thomas mm -hmm. I did a, a ballot for my cat my cat gets very yes. talkative when it's her meal time so <laughs> I, I read her all the nominees if you ago and she meowed at the ones and we we're like okay yeah you think Javier Bardem is gonna win best actor I don't see it happening but sure like, <laughs> I kept up a lot with with how she did mm -hmm. I didn't do uh, I did probably about as well as her on the 23 she got seven so mm -hmm. not great but good for a cat I got like uh I didn't switch over to Coda I kept with Power of the Dog for best picture because I just mm -hmm. couldn't bring myself to bring the go over to coda right. but i got the the screenplays right i got the actors right um yeah i got i got most of the big ones i wanted flea to win somewhere which is probably uh, my biggest prediction that man just don't didn't happen even in, get me started in any category i i will rant about that at some point in this little <laughs> conversation but i'll let you continue <laughs> but I, I no i think i did i did pretty well um yeah okay. how do you see the queen of basketball one Todd, are you, are you telling me your cat predicted that a movie called The Power of the Dog would win anything? Uh, she predicted, <laughs> I think she had, I actually, I have her ballot pulled oh. up, like her ballot wow. ready. She definitely predicted it. She's a very open-minded cat. That's a very, very open-minded cat. That is true. She, yeah. Best cinematography. <laughs> uh, she was a big, she, she thought Dune was going to win Best Picture. She was a oh, big wow. Dune head. So <laughs> she got, she got director, right? She got, mm -hmm. uh, 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 nope. She got the she got both supporting actor and actress correct. So I'm gonna need to consult your cat next year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> next year I'm only letting her fill out the ballot. Right. Matt, how did you do? So I'm actually just trying to tabulate that right now because I'm not gonna lie. There was a certain <laughs> point at the show where I just sort of lost track of what was happening. <laughs> uh, when you might say that we were sort of like knocked into a side dimension that I and I just yes. lost track. So I'm just looking at my ballot right now, and if I'm reading this right. I think I got every guess right except for one. Whoa. Wow. wow. So I filled out my ballot originally on February 13th when the nominations were um, put out. Yeah. And then I filled it out again the day before yesterday. So I'm looking at the ones from the day before yesterday. You and did. So I think you did. The only one. You did send me the ballot. So it is recorded. He didn't write these down as they were happening. So I do have record. Yeah. <laughs> and, but if I'm reading this right, the only one I got wrong 
was that the eyes of Tammy Faye took the best makeup and hairstyling, and I was sure that Cruella would take it. That's always but, that's always such a toss up. Hair hair and, and makeup is just always a toss up. But otherwise, my my guesses from Friday for best picture, director, actor, actress, best supporting actor, supporting actress, original and adapted screenplay. Oh no, I got a, I got an adapted screenplay sure. wrong too. Mm. I thought it would go to the Lost Daughter. Ah, for sure. I thought it would go to the Lost it. Daughter. Uh, but best animated and international I got right best documentary I got right I didn't guess short films um, and all the ones that Dune won I got right so yeah, yeah I got because Dune just like mopped the floor with the technical awards like mm. they just won everything <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah it's almost like it's one of the best pictures of the year uh, but, uh... but is it though but is it i don't like that was my biggest so actually am i wrong in in calculating that dune is the winningest movie of the night like they won the most of oh, no. it by it was mile, the yeah. winningest by double it yeah won six, because... and i think coda was the next yeah, one. yeah Co- that's true wow i did not think dune was that good <laughs> you know <laughs> we could we could with dune like I, I, my reaction to Doom was like technically it's beautiful. Like yeah. the 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 computer work was fantastic. The the design was incredible, and I just felt that it was just really hollow. And Matt and I we've talked about this a lot, and you've rewatched it a few times, and yeah. it works better for you on rewatch. I've only seen it once, and, and so I'm happy that it won the things it won because it mm-hmm. was spectacularly designed. But mm-hmm. anything above the design, and I love other Villeneuve movies, and but this one was a bit hollow for me. Yeah, and yeah. I I think that Dune is it. Dune will come to fruition for me. Hopefully, and fingers crossed that Dune will come to fruition when the next part comes out. Um, mm-hmm. I can't. Uh, Todd was. Uh, did I tell you that uh, 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 Villanueva needed to have a conversation with Peter Jackson to <laughs> yeah, to yeah, like, figure did. out how to like do an, a a very um, a, a good open ended uh, you know closing to a chapter right. Um, right. It just didn't feel that way. Like you get to the end and it just stops. So, so that's, you know, there's, there's, there's my critique on Dune. And I guess this leads into my next question for everyone, because uh, my biggest surprise is this fact that Dune won the most awards tonight. Like that's a title that they can like, that they can uh, just like post, post on every marketing thing that they have, that they won six Oscars. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't shock me at all, to, like right. at all. Like and you it, know this what? is often the case, right? Mm-hmm. My only my only complaint is that, and just to be clear, having seen Dune a couple of times, I definitely like it a lot more now than I did when I first saw it. But I didn't think it was ever going to win Best Picture. Mm-hmm. But I do think that when you consider that all of these technical categories are executed under the the guidance and input and insight of the director, I don't know why Denis Villeneuve wasn't nominated. You make a At very least. valid point, and you you At said least. this. I remember you texted this um, to me. Is that yeah? How do you win? Not not just get nominated for, but win six technical awards and not get nominated for best director? I think there's something to be to be mm-hmm. discussed there. But so my biggest surprise is that Dune was the the winningest uh, movie of the evening. Um, I really thought that Power of the Dog was going to do a lot more work tonight, uh, and and it got a couple, but not not as many as I thought it would. But um, uh, Todd, let's let's talk with you. What was your biggest surprise for the evening? I think Todd is frozen. Oh no, we'll get a Simon. Simon, what <laughs> was your what was your biggest? <laughs> Biggest surprise for the I mean, evening. I hate to be that guy, but my biggest surprise was watching someone assault someone else live on yeah, TV. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna and put a we're gonna put a pin on that one. Like we're, we will yeah. talk about that for sure. We're gonna come so back to movie, that movie movie wise. wise my yeah. biggest surprise. <laughs> um, I don't know because I'm not like you guys. I don't have time to watch things, so they're all surprises. Simon, Everything's a surprise. Simon, but we're the, gonna take you to VIP next year. <laughs> you're gonna see at least half of the nominees oh, okay <laughs> this was this was great last year because they gave us the streaming festival so i could watch it like whenever great. i wanted so that that was awesome but yeah that leaving the house and going to a cinema <laughs> i don't know but the um the biggest surprise i don't know i i'm really happy actually that cruella won um costume because mm-hmm. it's i love that movie i was mm-hmm. not expecting to love that movie i didn't think it would 
probably win, but um, I'm really glad it did. And I had no idea it was the same costume designer as um, Fury Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it truly deserved to win. And I really love the costume design of that film. So that was a really nice surprise for me. Good. Oh yeah. I was sure, I was sure from the start that that would win at least costume design. Cause I mean, they, they basically had to, uh, you know, reinvent sixties fashion for the movie. So, (laughs) you know, (laughs) it's exactly the kind of thing that the, the costume designer sect of mm-hmm. the academy really loves you know big dresses in a period setting that's mm-hmm. pretty much guaranteed to win yeah yeah absolutely and I, I agree i think i actually instead of costume design i think i had cruella winning hair and makeup because i think that was also a really big component of of that film mm-hmm. so i think both of those made sense but i'm i am happy that it won best uh best costume design i think it deserved that being a film about kind of about fashion that, mm-hmm. that makes a lot of sense, right? Um, Matt, what was your biggest surprise for the evening? I mean, honestly, I didn't really, I, I didn't really have that many surprises in terms of like award wins. <laughs> My <laughs> biggest surprise was that, you know, ahead of the show, they cut out those seven categories and announced yeah. that we're going to strive to make it come in under time. And then they just filled up that time with other BS mm-hmm. and it still ran over. Like it ended at what? It was a half hour over, yeah. which to be fair, in terms of the Oscars is not that over. Is it over or under? Because but... let's see, it, it went from... Oh, I guess it did start at, start five, at five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it did go the over. Big thing, I'm, the big I'm thing so... was it was going to be a tight three hours and it turned out to be <laughs> a rather flabby like 340 they yeah. really need to like just set better expectations for yourself. This is not a three hour program. Okay. Yeah. This is a four hour program. Like just plan for that. Okay. Because I don't think, I don't think I felt like there was a point where I, okay, I'm going to readjust my wording. There wasn't a <laughs> point where the runtime made me feel like it was going too long. There are some, some choices, some wind choices that made me want to turn it off. Um, but it's, but as far as the runtime, I was fine with it. Like it could have gone into, uh, cause it started at 5 PM Pacific time, which is where we are. Um, it could have gone to nine and I would have been fine with that. I think that the hosts that they got were, um, were really good hosts. I mean, it's nice getting comedians. I think Regina Hall was a little too thirsty <laughs> in this one. Just to, just... Honestly, I know I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the minority, but like, I was, I was sort of, I like that. Bit. I know I'm like the only one, but I kind of enjoy I'm just bit. happy there wasn't another segment about it because she did the opening and then there is her own segment about uh the the um the COVID tests. Like I I, I think I think they could tell it wasn't really playing. Right. <laughs> I, My whole thing went yeah. with any kind of skit like that is like, what if this were reversed? That like, and that is exactly was... where I was going with that. You are so right yeah. because I said you know right? yeah. as yeah. this was happening when she was like frisking um uh yes. Jeff Bridges um, if it no, was no, Josh no, Brolin um, Josh Brolin Josh sorry Brolin. Josh Brolin if it was <laughs> roles reverse <laughs> yeah bad. if it was roles reverse and it was a you know a guy frisking a girl yeah, um talking about how you know, just like uh, making all these these you know allusions to like sexual appeal like that would have been mm. so inappropriate yeah right yep. and, 100% and it uh, would. where yeah, is the consistency really with that right I I mm. It's a, I don't know. Like, you're right. It was it, the roles reverse. It would not have worked. And so, um, I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah, I I don't think it worked like as it was. I don't <laughs> like it shouldn't be okay just because you've got you've got a woman like oh look she's she's touching up these mm-hmm. famous actors and like fair enough if Jason Momoa was in front of me like he's a that man is a tank like. Yeah. <laughs> the the the, uh, he, the people around him were tall people. He is huge, so yeah. it's all funny. It's all funny when it's a woman touching up a guy, but like it mm-hmm. was just very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable for me. The whole thing. Yeah, I was I was uncomfortable with it as well, specifically for that reason because we're in this this very um, this very aware moment of time where we're trying to respect mm-hmm. people's. Uh, you know, space and privacy and and sexual harassment. Um, and I don't like I don't know if that was pre-rehearsed or if he agreed to that, but just from the surface value of it, it definitely just looked like, oh, this is a very weird improvised kind of thing that he is not a part of right now. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just kind of going for it for the sketch for laughs mm-hmm. and and jokes, so jokes. <laughs> kind of caused a problem tonight you know what i mean like just to stick on this one for a minute like i 
you guys are absolutely right and yeah. i still laughed but to be fair it was definitely the kind of laugh where i was like <laughs> it's just, uh, this is weird <laughs> i feel i feel bad about myself now but i'm still <laughs> laughing just this is just i just do am, the picture like pacino mm -hmm. touching up zendaya going oh yeah right yeah i mean yeah. i mean yeah. honestly, honestly this you're is, COVID positive oh <laughs> And Elga. honestly, it's it's funny because I was talking to my wife like just yesterday, or maybe it was even this morning. We were talking about Licorice Pizza, which, to mm -hmm. be fair, is a film one of the only films I haven't seen, mm -hmm. and about how like I understand there's like a 15 year old boy and a 25 year old girl, and imagine if those roles were reversed, mm -hmm. how inappropriate it would be. And so, yeah, I don't know. I'm just an old man from the country. I maybe I'm just a terrible person. I don't. It's just, but I yeah yeah. I definitely laughed, and then afterward, I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have laughed. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, which it's, which it's is interesting. Scene. I mean, this is this is the conversation that we should be having about these kind of things, right? Like, I think more people should be having these kind of conversations. Like, what happens? How do how should we feel? Um, about this compared to the roles reverse where we feel so differently about it you know yeah. I love Regina Hall we just got I just got out of Sundance a couple months ago where she had two films which was really funny I, I tweeted because she dressed up like uh, Tammy Faye um, which is entirely ironic because she did um, Honk for Jesus Save Your Soul which is another uh, movie where, where she ends up playing a, 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 the wife of a disgraced pastor um so kind of that same that same role and then uh, so the the parallels between those two characters is is kind of interesting to see but most people probably didn't get that because that movie hasn't been released yet um so i love regina hall she was in two films at sundance um you know i think that you know, her the, the the thirst jokes were you know they were funny you know and and i liked them but that particular moment was just really difficult to like how do I, how am I supposed to feel about this in context uh, of the conversation that we're having? Todd, welcome back. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we're good. Um, cool. We're talking we'll about- Go yeah, forward no. like nothing happened, just like of the Oscars. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. No, we're we're in the middle of a conversation about the uh, the Regina Hall uh, sketch where she, um, where she frisked, um, give me the- Berlin, the Josh name. Berlin. Berlin, Josh uh, Berlin. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking about how, I mean, I think most of us were uncomfortable with the fact that the roles reverse, that would have been a very inappropriate kind of joke. Um, yeah, it was, so. it was a weird moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it felt for me, sorry, it felt for me like it was one of many, many, many examples. Like it felt like the whole show tonight had been uh, organized in a way to try and get the young numbers and like yes. well, how can we appeal to the kids like yeah let's let's cut some things out and let's do a funny version of Bruno with Oscar's lyrics and let's mm -hmm. have like some sexual like risque jokes and it's mm -hmm. just it's just the whole thing just felt like so also bad. we're so to touch that none of that is gonna work. yeah yeah <laughs> right mm -hmm. definitely <laughs> they were definitely Steve Buscemi in the t-shirt like it was yeah. really you, it was you really know uncomfortable. let's talk about the ratings grabbing moments of the night um <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be the headline everywhere all all day tomorrow when when people read about the oscars and that is the will smith moment um todd you want to weigh in really quickly on how on on how, your experience with, the, with when that moment happened um yeah no, so I'll, I'll weigh in um, as y'all very keenly aware. Uh, not the greatest tech setup at the moment. My computer is in the shop, so I'm using a smaller laptop. And I was airplaying the 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 ceremony to my television. Mm -hmm. And there are moments throughout the night where, like, you the audio would stay, but the image would freeze for a sec. And this was one of those moments where the audio just kind of cut out after Will Smith comes up on stage. And I was like, oh, no, oh, no, too. that was the, no, no, that no, was no. the program. They, the program oh, cut the audio out. Very, yeah. <laughs> very quickly. I was like, I, you know, because I just had Twitter scrolling on my phone. It was very quickly. But <laughs> everyone was like, yeah, that was not my computer. <laughs> and it was a shocking, to say the least, that I had missed something, that I was witnessing everything as it was playing out mm -hmm. in the moment that Will Smith had actually gone up on stage and actually hit Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. And then... You know, it's gone and sat back down, and you could clearly see him say, "Keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth." Yeah, like he did say very, that, yeah. very articulately, <laughs> and he did not look like he was joking. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we know now that he was not joking. Mm -hmm. 
I was, I, mean, I was, I was floored. It was interesting because I think after that moment happened, there were, it was very, everyone likes to, I'm sure everyone likes to put in their input and like weigh in on this really dramatic thing that happened. And there was, a, I think there was some buzz about, oh, this was staged for ratings and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and I don't know, maybe part of that is true. Um, maybe I, there, no, no, was, no, 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 ultimately, <laughs> ultimately I, I know that I, I don't think it was staged for ratings. I think that maybe ratings may have been a part of it in some way or another. But the way that Chris reacted um, after that happened, like he couldn't get words straight. He kept mixing up mm -hmm. words, trying to get to the nomination. So that was not, that, that was definitely not a, a, a pre-planned, pre-rehearsed thing. And I wonder like how much like beef there was or how much like, the, the, there was a point where I said to my husband, like, it's, it looks like Will has been wanting to hit Chris for a long time, and this was just his opportunity. Anyway, Matt, what was what was your reaction to how this, this moment unfolded? I mean, similar to Todd, I completely floored. Like, that's the moment where I stopped paying attention to the rest of the show. Yeah, like, I was tweeting along quite happily, and now the rest <laughs> of my feed for the rest of the night is just various retweets and comments on Will Smith, because I had how do you account for something like that like mm -hmm. that's not the craziest thing i've seen happen at the oscars but it's probably number two right mm -hmm. like number two after the best picture mix up like you must oh like, yeah or warren Beatty and um uh fuck sure <laughs> you can just tell that the people who gave the best picture to the wrong people are like yes mm -hmm. it's not us anymore <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> but but like i i don't know i I found his speech to be really perplexing. I found mm -hmm. the moment to be actually very understandable. Like mm -hmm. Chris Rock said something shitty about his wife. He got up and slapped him. Mm -hmm. I understand that part of it. Right. I don't think it was appropriate, just to be clear. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't think it's, especially at that level of stage, you got to be able to like, as a performer and as a person about to win a goddamn award, you got to be able to take take your lumps and be like all right that was a shitty joke have words at the after party mm -hmm. like you don't get up and slap him i wonder if he's going through something i don't know if he is he I is found now his, <laughs> i mean yeah i found his speech to be really perplexing because mm -hmm. it was in some ways very understandable and he was clearly very emotionally overwhelmed by the entire situation and i wish he'd just come out and been like i'm sorry from the get-go and just made that his speech like i'm sorry to everyone and he did say it in the middle technically mm -hmm. but he was clearly fumbling and i don't know man like i don't i i'm barely processing this myself it doesn't make any sense to me i feel like we're all processing it because i think that that speech it, it blows my mind because he had time to think about like if i win because I know that I'm texting a, a few people who say, what happens if Will Smith wins best actor, right? Like everyone's already yeah. speculating about this. You couldn't, there's no way he didn't think about that possibility. Like if I win best actor, what do I do about that, right? Like I just did this very dramatic thing. And I, and I agree. I think that his, his speech was, it's, it's, it was a it was a, a perplexing thing. He he didn't really have all the words to put together. How do you juxtapose this win with that action that he did? There's so much complexity and nuance to it. Simon, your turn. Let's let's hear what you think about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I found it very interesting that in the commercial break between the incident and him collecting the award, there's a couple of pictures on Twitter of him in deep conversations with his publicist. And I think he's got a right in there going, right, we need to save your career now because this is your career about to finish. Uh, but, but the thing that blows my mind is that he was there to even make a speech to begin with. Like he, what says more about toxic masculinity and, and power and money that you can assault someone live on TV and still be in the room to sip your champagne to win mm -hmm. your golden award. Like, where was security? Where were the police? Like, someone made the decision not to call the police on this. And, well, I was thinking about this. Like, if, if he had taken a breath and thought, right, Chris Rock, after the show, I'm going to find him. And let's say he goes backstage and he punches Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. The police would be there instantly and we'd see his mugshots in the morning news. Mm -hmm. But because he did it live on TV, <laughs> that whole stuff is, like, gone. Like... 
how how can he, he still be in that room to even win the award to even make the speech and the speech he i there wasn't a single person in that room especially you know, anyone in a relationship has felt that protective instinct like mm-hmm. i've got kids as well i feel very protective of my my whole family and unfortunately that you've got another example of someone very famous who spent his whole life working against extreme prejudice to to, to get where he is using violence to solve a problem like using violence against someone or something he doesn't like and Mm -hmm. now there's there's millions of viewers who who could be influenced by that as well so Mm -hmm. i don't know it's it it felt very very surreal it felt very apt to the timeline we we've been in for a couple of years like of course he punches chris rock and then of course he wins because that's the the timeline we're in now but um i was just shocked that he was even left there to collect his golden statue i I, mm -hmm. yeah todd what are you thinking i was gonna say i just uh, there are a couple i just found myself really wondering about a couple things in that moment which one i think it's just shocking that there's a a runway basically from his seat to the comedian making jokes about the public i mean he walked the distance of like my couch to my kitchen Mm -hmm. and that was all it took there was no security there was no one in the way the other thing i found that just a a real like what if i was playing over in my mind is like what if for all of his not being able to find the right words after it like what if chris Oh man, what a cliffhanger. <laughs> what if Chris Rock is just like, I'm out and just left the stage? Yeah. Or, and then what happens? Then does Will Smith stay? Does he get to accept his award? Like, there's, there's so much that was just mm-hmm. the, how did the Oscars let the show just go on? Like that's, that? you know, what's also, interesting. So, we, we what it, do you do? Right. In trying to figure out whether this was staged or not, whether this was pre planned, is this a sketch? Is this real? Like, me and, my, me and my husband, we were, we were like talking this over and trying to figure it out. And, and I think that the, it, it was the aftermath that really helped us deduce like what is going on here because Chris had no idea how to react to this. No. And, and I don't know if you guys saw the video of the, um, of the actual audio because someone recorded it where they did mm. keep the audio and you can, and, yeah. and it does From Japan. exactly right. And, and they, um, it does, uh, clarify that he said, you know, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. Um, Chris says it was a joke about GI Jane, right? And and so you you can get kind of more of the details and the context of what happened there. Um, but Chris, it, it, it's like this is show business, right? And so you have to, regardless of what goes wrong, you have to kind of keep with the program. And I think Chris tried to do that, but it was it was a very shocking thing. Uh, and and I don't know. Again, this gets back to the fact that there's so much nuance in in how all of this happened. Was Will right to sub, to uh, to um, protect to defend his wife so strongly? Was Chris wrong to have made that joke? I wouldn't joke at all for the rest of the night. That would be the end of jokes for me. Like after that, like if I was Amy Schumer or if I was Regina Hall or Wanda Sykes, we'd be done joking. Like I just don't want any more drama, right? Most most of the rest of the comedy, honestly, for me, except for the one moment when Amy Schumer was like, did I miss anything? She did say, she's like, Like, I laughed at that moment. (laughs) Yeah. But then like the rest of the jokes for the rest of the night fell super flat for me. So I was just like, how do you, how do we go on from here? Just, I'm not joking about anything. We're just going to, we're going to play this as safe as possible for the rest of the night because we don't need any more of that. But I I think that this (laughs) leads very interestingly into the Oscars and ratings, right? Because as much as we condemn or we might talk down about this particular moment and the and the speech that he gave and like how perplexing this all is ultimately it's drama and does the oscars lose on drama this is going to get a lot of headline exposure tomorrow this is going to be this is this is currently we're we're currently talking about it like how do we reconcile that like is this just something that the oscars tries to encourage for ratings like i don't know matt what what do you think about like the fact that this is something that is interesting i mean i i don't think this is the kind of thing that the academy is going to want to encourage no like this is as much as this is will smith putting at at best 
an indelible stain on his own career mm -hmm. and on what should be and like an acme moment in his career it's also a black mark on the oscars too right like well, this isn't this isn't the golden globes they're not sitting at tables drinking themselves <laughs> under the table right like golden globes <laughs> there's like a joke about they, the golden globes that was really funny too <laughs> yeah, that's true there was <laughs> But like the point is that like it's meant to be the top tier show. It's meant mm -hmm. to be quite dignified. It's meant to be the highest mm -hmm. honor. This is not the show where you get up and slap a guy. Yeah. It is. It it could be the show. Like honestly, I would it, even if Will Smith had just yelled from his seat, I think mm -hmm. it probably would have been like we would still be talking about it. Probably mm -hmm. not so fervently, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but we'd still be talking about it, right? Because like you don't you just don't do that at the Oscars. You don't do that mm -hmm. when you're at the the top event for your industry mm -hmm. and if you do then it just becomes a thing that no one will ever not talk about mm -hmm. right like you can't it's a shame because like th by the same token you can't talk about moonlight without talking about the yeah. fact about the the flub of the giving them the award right right this is not a thing that the oscars want as mm -hmm. much as they want ratings this is not the ratings that they want they are not an organization that believes that all press is good press yes yeah. I, I would say Todd, yeah for sure i was just going to say i mean go back to the early 70s and when Marlon Brando didn't accept his Oscar for The Godfather and yeah. invited like a Native American speaker that was definitely the biggest moment in the Oscars for a really long time and that was and we still talk they, we still talk about it and it's not one they wanted to replicate ever like the full pause of the Oscar are like Jennifer Lawrence trips and it's like okay well that is like a good kind of like well fine we'll let Jennifer Lawrence trip and that'll be yeah. a big social media moment I definitely yeah. But they don't think they want the Will Smith, who is like the child dad for like a whole generation of people, getting up on stage and, and confronting anyone in any sort of way. Yeah, the, the kind of press the Oscars want is Ellen DeGeneres organizing a selfie yep. that goes on to be the exactly. most retweeted thing in the world. Mm -hmm. well, see, That's what they want. That is true. And I agree with everything you guys are saying. Like, technically speaking, I absolutely 100% support everything you're saying. There are There is good, bad press, right? Like Jennifer Lawrence tripping. <laughs> That's kind of an embarrassing moment, but she plays it off. She goes up, she accepts her Oscar or whatever. And then there's bad, bad press. Um, but mm. ultimately, the past few years, the Oscars have not had a very winning streak with the public, right? And so what the public likes is drama. And what this was, mm. was drama. Simon, do you concur well, with Matt and Todd? What, what do you think about here? What about this? Well, we've got to remember that this was high drama and it is what the public wants. But what the public wants more is the Flash entering the Speed Force. I mean, let's face it, that is the <laughs> high point of the Oscars. There's no greater fan favorite moment than a, a, a part that's so dynamic. I actually don't remember ever watching it. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I don't know if that, that moment exists it's in any movie. Absolutely. I was like, that's a fake moment. <laughs> totally. That that totally. Like, I've that's that's only because you of, went and, into the speed force and reversed the timeline and erased yeah. it from your memory. <laughs> I, Matt, I love, I love you were, you were in Endgame with a, a lot of people when it first came out. You described like the fury and like everyone cheering and shouting. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if that happened during uh, Justice League. <laughs> like, yeah, no, Flash is in this. Um, <laughs> oh my God, finally! He's, he's finally doing running the into the light. Thing. <laughs> he's doing the thing. That, you know what? If I'm, if I'm a producer of the Oscars and I see that for some reason, audiences chose the Flash moment over the Avengers moment, I just wouldn't air it. Like that just... <laughs> Yeah, this is it's <laughs> definitive proof they don't they don't tamper with the votes. Like it's, it's um, sort of hard case proof they don't tamper. But with then I have to wonder who are they who are they polling here because there is no universe that Justice League or the DCEU has a better moment <laughs> than twenty three movies later the Avengers having this Avengers assemble moment. There's just it just does that's not a thing, really. Unless that's you're like fans, you man. Know, I mean, honestly, Snyder, dude, this, this Snyder is fans a, on Twitter. There is not right. a day where I don't click on trending topics on Twitter, and yeah. and Zack Snyder's Justice League is not trending. Not a day, not an hour. Like they are organized. Yeah, they are terrifying. <laughs> is that the biggest moment in the DCEU? Like, no, no, it's, it's not. It's not even. It's not even the, know, biggest, the biggest moment, moment the for me. I don't like the DCEU. So that was. But, <laughs> but, 
<laughs> going going back to your original questions right yeah. before I got yeah, yeah. involved with Zack Snyder again. <laughs> yes. Um, the 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 uh, the Oscars, I think. Like you're right, all all press is good press, but this is terrible for the Oscars because mm. this is the closest to royalty America's got. Well, I mean, they had royalty, but they got rid of it. Mm. <laughs> but um, <laughs> now, like this is the closest to the the prestige old time Hollywood like moment. And you're right, the Oscars can't have one of their superstars on the front row, right next to Keith Urban, like running up to someone and punching someone in the face. Well, this this actually incites a very interesting question is, should Will Smith be stripped of his best, oct- uh, best actor award? What do you guys think? I, I, I don't, don't know, know that I'm qualified to answer that question. I'm going to say, so I'm going to say no, right? I'm going to say it was a very, um, it was that whole situation was poor taste, right? But I don't think, like, I think that there is cancel culture, right? We are in a world of cancel culture where, where when one thing goes wrong, we have to strip everyone or we have to strip that person of every good thing they've done, right? Look, Will Smith put on a good performance in, uh, in, um, uh, in that film King Richard and and him winning it I think is you know they obviously voted before that whole situation happened so there's a lot of people who thought he deserved that award right and so I I, I wonder I, I there's a part of me that thinks that this question is going to come up over the next day or two where should Will Smith be stripped of his award because of this behavior that he exhibited? And I think mm-hmm. I would be willing to separate the person and the behavior from the artist enough to say, you know, that was distasteful. It wasn't, it, it wasn't a good decision, um, but you know, he, he earned that award right like are you guys on that yeah. same page or do you think what, what yeah you guys I, I i agree i agree i don't think he should have been there to collect it mm-hmm. i should yeah. think there was a, a great moment for will smith can't be with us tonight because he's now with the police <laughs> with the police um, yeah. but i i i think yeah, i think that what what will naturally happen is that he'll get fewer chances to to uh, even be nominated for an oscar i mm-hmm. i would hope yeah. that this has some kind of fallout that affects his career but i don't like mm-hmm. I, he he should have won the thing for the thing he'd already done he shouldn't have been right. there to collect it though yeah i think yeah. i think that it comes to for me it will come down to how the next couple of weeks shake out like mm-hmm. his speech was very rambling i understand that he was very emotionally overwhelmed and he didn't really have the words but how he reacts to this when he's asked about it every day for the next several weeks is really going to be telling for me yeah. and even like because and and every how he reacts to it in a year from now and how he reacts to it in 10 <laughs> years from now is going to be telling i think he was deserving of the award i agree with simon i don't think he should have been there to collect it i think he should have <laughs> at least been backstage with security right. like at least um, it, it, or that, that, honestly, it'd be even better. It should have been backstage with Chris Rock making amends. <laughs> you guys make a very valid point because I know my husband. We we are obviously just like reeling over this particular moment, and I swear it was probably like five or ten minutes later. There's a joke that's made, and the camera pans to Will Smith just like laughing as if nothing had happened, uh, right? Yeah. And I'm sure this is where a lot of the conspiracy theories come. Where like, oh, it must have been pre-planned. Oh, that must have been like a part of the show or whatever, right? Because he was he was just so like like nothing had happened it was a very weird moment like the moment was uh, weird and then and then his and yeah. then just like going back to normal was kind of weird as well I, yeah i sort of i sort of understand sorry i don't mean to cut you off i sort no, of i sort of get that though i sort of get like someone says something you walk up to the guy you smack him in the face you think the crowd is with you and then slowly between yeah. that moment and the moment where you win you slowly come to realize mm. that oh yeah. shit yeah yeah they're not with me so when it the first time it cut back to him and he was like yeah what you know mm-hmm. he i was like yeah he's still riding the adrenaline of that moment mm-hmm. and then by the time he got to the where he was winning the award i was like this is going to be fucking awkward <laughs> yeah. yes I, yeah. I think, so i i think the will, what makes the debacle so much more bewildering is that 
I don't know how many voters voted for Will Smith thinking he actually gave the best performance of the five mm-hmm. nominees. I think in a lot of ways this was Will Smith has never gotten an Oscar. Mm-hmm. Will Smith has been beloved since the early 90s. And like it's going to be awesome to watch Will Smith give his Oscar speech. And, and he's and he's been trying a lifetime. Of, he's been trying to win an Oscar been, for several yeah, years. Yeah, he's been trying to win yep. for a long time. This press cycle was vicious. I mean, with the Jada and the, mm-hmm. the tangled marriage, and then his book coming out. I mean, he did the circuit hard. It was not just for King Richard, which he is very good in, mm-hmm. but it was it was. Hey, we're going to give Will Smith his mm-hmm. moment. He's going to give an awesome speech. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's going to be awesome to see Will Smith finally accept the award that he's been trying to get for so many years and now you mm-hmm. know yeah and i mean that's a pretty normal way for oscars to go too right like i, think I don't think so... there's anyone who believes that russell crowe was better in gladiator than he was in the insider i don't right? know if there's anyone think... that believes that jessica chastain should have won for for eyes of tammy faye like <laughs> oh so i get i get that one too because these awards often go to most acting and not best acting right. <laughs> which which to be uh-huh. fair is why i selected jesse plimmons for best supporting actor because man let me tell you something i we actually Actually, I have with a, a really good friend of mine, we have this running joke that Jesse Plemons is kind of the knockoff uh, Matt Damon, like with Matt, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like Amy Schumer made yeah. that joke where Melissa McCarthy said no, right? Like that's, that's kind of how I see um, Jesse Plemons, which I don't mean as an insult. He, he's a good actor. He takes a lot of roles and he nails all of them, especially in uh, in Power of the Dog. I totally think he, he deserves that. But there is this running joke. Where, oh yeah, he's like the knockoff Matt Damon. Damon. Like he's the one that they go to when Matt Damon says no. Right. Um, and so I was really hoping he would win this one so that because he has a catalog of great work, um, but it's just always in this like shadow. He's always in this like supporting role and like maybe this could boost him. But um, but so I guess on the topic of like <laughs> disappointments at the Oscars, um, there's a lot of them. Uh, my biggest disappointment, I'll just go ahead and put it out there right now. I'm sure anyone who knows me already knows what my what my biggest <laughs> disappointment is right now. Uh, but my biggest disappointment is that Flea was entirely, ugh, entirely ignored um for any wins um they were nominated uh, flea was nominated for three oscars lost all three of the oscars uh to uh, one of the losses was a very unfortunate one to a disney project and we and disney doesn't need an oscar um i don't think uh not more than flea but my biggest disappointment is that flea was ultimately entirely overlooked and and that is that's just such a crime to me such a shame because that movie was phenomenal does anyone else have any massive disappointments that they need to get off their chest yeah i do i need to get in there and just say uh spielberg is the greatest living film director (laughs) and and i west side story i'm a a kid and west side story is one of my favorite musicals and Mm -hmm. and his version is better than the original like i uh, I, I watched that film with my daughter and just, I've, I've done a lot of filmmaking, a lot of, I've studied a lot of filmmaking and just like open mouthed at the framing and the editing and the pacing and just everything. I love well, clearly Spielberg movies anyway, but this was, this was the moment he, I think he really deserved to get that Oscar to make mm-hmm. the thing he'd been dreaming about making for years and gets anyway. And uh, as I know, Jane Campion was like day one. Like I've seen some of Power of a Dog. I didn't make it all the way through. Uh, I will. I will get. I, I will watch it in the storms. I'm sure at some point. Um, I think I mean, one, to be, to be one, fair, one of the sites made a joke about that too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was totally. Yeah, that's me. Like I tried. I will. But like I was so disappointed that uh, Spielberg didn't win Best Director. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Todd, any any big disappointments for you? Um, my big bigger disappointments definitely would have come with the nominations coming out. I was a mm-hmm. big big fan of the worst person in the world, and thought mm-hmm. uh, Renate Renzve, the lead actress in it, gave the best performance of the year. I just think she had to do the most of uh, of any actor or or actress in the category that she would have had to do, and. Um, yeah, and so it, I think the, the screenplay awards kind of got me down. Uh, I think Belfast and Coda were definitely the safest choices. And I don't think 
that Coda won or should have won Best Adapted Screenplay because I do think the writing is the worst part of that movie and I love that movie. Mm -hmm. I just think adapting uh, Drive My Car, The Lost Daughter, I'll, those other works were just way more difficult and I thought that was one of the most interesting categories. And so when it went to Coda, which I kind of knew it was going to go to Coda, predicted it would go to Coda. Right. I mean, I was pretty upset. Also, Flea. Love Flea. <laughs> so. uh, don't get me started. I am very disappointed Flea didn't get anything. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Matt, what, uh, what disappointments did you encounter at the, the Oscars tonight? So I'm going to be a little contrary and say that I didn't really have any. <laughs> Okay. because um, because I, your 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 ballot was perfect right? I mean, it wasn't perfect <laughs> but it was pretty close but the uh so there's i'll say a couple things first off i i would have been disappointed if a certain best picture nominee had won mm. because it's a bad movie and it shouldn't have been in the category yeah um and uh, I don't want to say its name out loud, but I will. It's Don't Look Up. That's a terrible movie. <laughs> I, was say, <laughs> yes. just... I think we're all on the same page. <laughs> uh, the other thing is that my favorite film of the year wasn't nominated for anything. So Wait, what was your let's... favorite film of the year? Uh, Pig. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. That's the another big nomination snub. Huge snub. <laughs> uh, you know what? Maybe it wouldn't have won anything, but you could trade Don't Look Up for Pig as a Best uh, best Picture nomination. You could trade... Um, hold I on, can't believe look Bardem, at the... got a, Bardem got a nomination over Cage. Yeah, yeah. you could yeah, trade Bardem 100%. over Nicolas Cage for sure. Like, who did Nicolas Cage piss off? <laughs> <laughs> I, oh, well, I, this I is, think that's probably a long list isn't it? I'm sure, that's <laughs> really true. so this is coming up to, to sort of more of my point though is that I don't like and to be fair I've been a fan of the Oscars for a long time I've watched it every year since I was mm -hmm. a kid and at some point fairly recently and it might have been Green Book that finally made like cracked it for me because that, that was not a good serving win mm -hmm. but the Oscars are not an objective measure of quality. They are a popularity contest. Yeah. And that part of the reason I, when I went to redo my predictions this year, closer to the show, the reason I used the same ballot was just to be, because my first ballot was like, these are the ones I like. And the, the second time I did it was, these are the ones I think are going to win. And the ones I thought were going to win were not because they were good or I thought they were the best. It was because... Will Smith has won three awards and there are now four awards in the past mm -hmm. three weeks. And Coda's won a bunch of awards in the past month. And Jessica Chastain cleaned up over Kristen Stewart, which doesn't make sense to me. No, no. sense. No but, sense. And like, I guess if you were going to have a, a disappointment, that would be the one. Like, I haven't seen The Eyes of Tammy Faye. I'm sure she's great in it. I thought Kristen Stewart gave one of the best performances of the let's, year. Let's mm -hmm. not use the word great so liberally, okay? <laughs> she, is, she is the best part of The Eyes of Tammy Faye. And The Eyes of Tammy Faye is a movie that does not have really very many good parts. Right. Yeah, and look, but, I, it, but again, it comes down to the fact that it's just a popularity contest yeah. and the voting runs right up to the show, too, right? Like voting mm -hmm. closed on Wednesday, maybe Tuesday. Like, so it's yeah. voting runs very late and award season momentum is a thing. And yeah. so I sort of stopped being disappointed because if you look back at my favorite films over the past decade or ever, really, None of them are necessarily big Oscar winners. And there's a lot of years out there where if you look at the Oscar nominees, you just go, what, really? Re yeah. Th those do. ones? Yes. I and a lot of and a lot of it is that again, A, it's a popularity contest, and B, a movie like Pig doesn't have a chance because they don't have Disney behind it campaigning for it. Right. Right. Uh, you don't get there's so many performances that are overlooked. The worst person in the world just doesn't mm -hmm. have the resources to have people stumping for it on the campaign trail. And it is a campaign trail. Like very famously mm -hmm. that, you know, he who must not be named of Miramax Pictures, they won a shitload of Oscars in the 90s yeah. because they were super good at campaigning for their movies, not because their movies were necessarily the best. Mm -hmm. And so just because of that, I don't really get disappointed in the same way anymore, even when like in the best actress category, my pick didn't win. Yeah. You, my you personal make, choice right you make a very valid point because i think and maybe this is subconsciously why i stopped caring about the oscars so much because the movies that deserve to win aren't always the movies that should win right like the the quality movies aren't the ones that wins it's the it's the name brands 
Disney in Kanto winning over Flea? You can't be serious. <laughs> like, well, I mean, there is I mean, no way. <laughs> and the, it, the other thing, honestly, is that it just, it just comes down ultimately to, for me anyway, to the fact that art and movies, even the ones by Disney that are heavily corporatized, are still mm-hmm. art is yeah. subjective they are art. very they, subjective they are art they are subjective and you know, there are things that that Encanto can win I'm actually happy that they that they um nominated the song um uh Dos Ogruitas over um we don't talk about Bruno right like that was a very that was an art decision, right? Because we don't talk about Bruno became this like pop culture kind of thing. <laughs> so pop culture that they ended up having to incorporate it, even though the song wasn't nominated. Oh, shoot. Sorry, guys. Are you there? This, this one's my fault. Sorry. Are you guys there? Uh. Okay. Are we back? I mean, it's a really good freeze frame, too. <laughs> this would be great <laughs> for me to rant about. Do I look good? Am I flattering? You want me to take over this while this is a good catches. way to freeze yeah, yeah. frame, oh, right? Absolutely. Can, can you guys hear me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. That, I was you know. that was my connection. Um, I I do appreciate the fact that that the song I I can't pronounce it. Dos uh, gruitas, um that that one was nominated rather than we don't talk about Bruno, right? Because we don't talk about Bruno became such a cultural phenomenon that the Oscars had to incorporate it and then had to get Megan Thee Stallion, which honestly, I'm not even mad at because that was actually a pretty cool cameo. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I guess there is so much subjectivity to it that it can be, um, it can be kind of discouraging to, to like, invest into because you want the objectively good stuff to win um but ultimately this whole situation is subjective right so yeah i uh, before we should let simon talk about uh, his relationship with encanto because <laughs> yes and bruno i'm sure you have bruno a lot, of, sure you you have a lot have. to say about it <laughs> but i would say that definitely as because i've also watched the oscars like every year since i was a kid and I, it's become a learned behavior for me not to be disappointed, but rather to be excited when good things happen. Like, it's mm-hmm. not disappointing to me when Jessica Chastain beats Kristen Stewart, because, like, I know deep down that even though Stewart did a much better performance, that Chastain's probably going to win. But I get really excited when Parasite wins Best Picture, because I thought that was the best of those nominees. And when it won, I was like, oh my God, like, I'm Guys, naturally. Yeah predisposed to be disappointed Let and, and honestly a, that's it's a much better way to be too to be excited yeah. for the good stuff than disappointed about the that bad is one. true yeah. but have hold a on. much happier life let's talk about representation really quick i googled it uh, todd i was talking with you um mm-hmm. and i googled it parasite is the first foreign language film to win best picture mm-hmm. yep you're it's, telling it's, me in the like nearly 80 years, over 80, I don't know how many, there's been a lot of decades that the Oscars have existed. Parasite in, what was it, 2019, 2020, mm-hmm. whatever, was the first foreign language film to win best. That's why they cut off Drive My Car uh, yeah. director when he was trying to give his speech. Oh, made me right? so angry. That, that made me so mad. By, yeah. the, by the same token, there, there hasn't been an animated film winning best picture since they split it off into its own category and and there is that as well like there's just and this maybe this is why i can't subscribe to todd i'm, I'm happy that todd has this perspective because that is a really healthy way to go about watching the oscars <laughs> <laughs> it really is <laughs> that's a very healthy approach to it but i just get like internally infuriated when i think about the fact that that there there is just this like I, I don't know this predisposition to a certain type of film, a certain uh, uh, I don't know. Like, there's just certain films that win Best Picture, and it's very unfortunate that foreign films are excluded from that. You nominated Drive My Car as a courtesy. Well, it, oh. why? Like, that's not that's unfortunate because Drive My Car is a phenomenal film that 
when we're and we'll get to this in a minute what actually won best picture um but drive my car is a phenomenal film um and super emotional and definitely deserves that oscar why was parasite the first uh foreign language film to win best picture you know the oscars are i'm and maybe i'm opening a a, a massive can of worms that we are not going to solve in this call <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I, maybe that's what I'm doing right now, but I'll just put it out there. Um, the Oscars seem so disingenuous with their attempt to be inclusive and their attempt to be diverse. It's so surface level that 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 things like the director of Drive My Car getting cut off ten seconds into his speech are just glaring with what the with what the culture of the of the Academy actually feels and and their attitudes towards diversity actually is i'm just gonna put that out there and let y'all do with it what you will <laughs> i mean i can i think i can answer part of what you're talking about at least in terms of why foreign language films generally don't win sure and the answer is that ultimately the oscars are a local show they mm -hmm. are a local show to not even america necessarily but to one state in america mm -hmm. yeah right there and so they have local bias which is and, unfortunate because vancouver is such a hub for filmmaking and for yeah. tv production and and storytelling you know like that's just a, a a you know a very almost a localized example of like where film can come from where great film yeah. can come from uh and it's entirely ignored because it's not american but, or it's not hollywood specifically and, like and that's just it, right? Like ultimately they are an award show for Hollywood by Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And that's why films from away generally don't win. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's, you know, they've added a lot of people to the Academy and they have made an effort to be more diverse with the people they invite, but there's still a huge cabal of old white dudes who mm -hmm. own most of the mm -hmm. reins, right? Like we're not only talking about the subjective opinions of a specific, of, of, people but the subjective opinions of a group of old white men that's really mm -hmm. what we're talking about <laughs> they're so they're like 60 percent over 60 and they're like 80 percent white like right. it's it's <laughs> i i don't know those are the actual numbers but that's what it feels like to me. Mm -hmm. um and so so, so much of this is yeah. about what hits as well that's the same re reason bruno was performed uh, and canto had limited um, theatrical release and didn't do very well like it didn't have mm -hmm. huge numbers it, it it came off really quickly and then maybe it was magical, maybe they were planning it, but being put straight on Disney Plus gave it the position to get in every single house that mm -hmm. had that streaming service. And as soon as the, that, um, those characters and those songs started the, the Facebook word of mouth, that's why that song was at the Oscars without being nominated. And I think it's the same with, with Parasite. Like there are so many good Korean movies that came out around that time. I Great. love Korean cinema. I love that director. Parasite's a fantastic movie. Mm -hmm. And the reason it, it was recognized in the Oscars is that it, for whatever reason, it got the word of mouth mm -hmm. and it landed and it made American money. And because it made American money, it suddenly became important. Yeah. And there's, there's for every Parasite, there's a hundred other foreign movies mm -hmm. that for whatever reason, doesn't make American money or didn't like get the, the release at the right time with the right audience. Yeah, it's a po it's popularity contest. Yeah. Yeah. The, narr the narrative is as important as the, as the movie itself. Yeah, more, I, I more so. I think that's part of it. Well, part of it is when they nominate these foreign language films, like something like Parasite in that year or Drive My Car in this year. It's like that was so overwhelmingly the most popular or quote unquote best foreign language film of that year. We don't get to see like mm -hmm. the don't look up of, of foreign cinema. It's not like anything where we're just like, oh, that's actually like not a very good film that happened to be made <laughs> in Korea that got nominated. I just don't understand why it Don't to... Look Up was a part of the Oscars. But it has Look, to even be if you enjoyed that. Even if you because enjoyed the, that the Academy, film, like... <sighs> the Academy loves Adam McKay, that's why. I know, that's, popular. That's... You're right, I know. They also uh, like movies that I make need... them feel really smart, which is why need... Sorkin will never <laughs> not be nominated. I need yeah. to be more like yeah. Todd. 
I just can't. <laughs> just give up. Just Send, give up early. <laughs> Better for your blood pressure, definitely. I know. <laughs> it's so infuriating. Like all of the you, there's you're right. Like, I don't know what it was about Parasite. And and I was just thinking, like, as you guys are talking, like maybe film festivals can have something to do with this. Maybe if it's shown at more film festivals or if film festivals promoted it more, made it the opening film or or whatever, right? But I look at Flea. And think that film did so many film festivals. Like it opened at Sundance and had kind of a quiet period. And then at the critical point between like October and December, it was at every film festival and still got no Oscar wins. I am so mad about this, guys. A lot of you can't, you can't tell. You're really hiding it. Right? <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of the viewing public have a real aversion to subtitles, like reading, drawing, and movies. They do. Like, That's they true. Just, they I mean, just don't to, be fair, read. to be fair, I did for a long time. There's a whole story about like how I ended up getting into foreign language film. Um, but but yeah, so yeah, it, it's it's a it's a thing. We we as America, I know, I don't know about Canada, but here in America, I can say for sure people don't like reading <laughs> reading subtitles. <laughs> but we we have two official languages, and nobody likes reading subtitles. <laughs> yeah, if which, they release a movie in French, I'm like absolutely not. Which which honestly <laughs> honestly it's a huge shame because I think a lot of our best films come out of Quebec. <laughs> Like, That's true. Quebec That's has a really vibrant film industry, and a lot of the best Canadian films I've seen in the last like five years, especially, have all been French language from Quebec. You know what's funny <laughs> is I just watched uh, um, Turning Red. That's a uh, Toronto, oh. right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. They should. Have it's said very. Uh, if you've never been there, it's very Toronto. It's very accurately it, Toronto. I got well. Toronto out of that film out of ne- after never having been to Toronto. Like yeah. it just. Yeah. There's so much Canada oh, yeah. and so much like Toronto. It's so all Canadian. It, all it needed yeah. to do was be in French, and then it would have like <laughs> just been the most authentic like Ontario film ever um yeah oh my gosh there's so much like i could i could do a whole i think we could do a whole podcast just on like foreign language films uh in the oscars Mm -hmm. but you know what let's 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 get close to wrapping it up right there's one last thing that we need to talk about and um that is the fact that a certain film won best picture which wasn't the film that I thought it was going to be before the Oscars starts, but started, but, but like 40 minutes into the Oscars, I thought, oh, that's actually a very viable option. And as it turns out, Coda won best picture at the Oscars. Let's talk about how we feel about that. Uh, Matt, do, do you have any, any thoughts or reactions to Coda winning best picture? So, so again, I think that all nine of the 10 nominees for best picture were all good movies Mm -hmm. and i would not be disappointed if nine of those nine won (laughs) um i think and i i know there's gonna be a lot of people being like really coda it's so because in a lot of ways it does feel uh someone described it to me that it felt like a hallmark movie Mm -hmm. which i think is completely unfair i think that coda is a perfectly executed version of the movie that it is yeah i agree Mm -hmm. there are there are there are very few surprises, but when the big emotional moment hits in the third act, you're goddamn right I cried because it's a <laughs> it's a perfectly executed version of that story. Yeah, and there's a lot to be said for that. Like, I don't need a film to be super innovative or do something completely unexpected for me to think that it's really really good. A really well executed version of a movie is a really well executed version of a movie. It's right mm-hmm. there in the sentence. You know? <laughs> right, Todd. I'm so gonna it. It was it wasn't my personal pick, but I'm not I'm I'm not surprised. I actually that's the one I predicted would win. Yeah, and because it had a lot again a lot of momentum in the last couple of weeks, and so yeah, it's fine. I'm fine with it. Todd, I'm gonna get to you in just a second. Simon, what were your thoughts? Have you seen Coda yet? Um, no. Okay. It's that of all the films I hadn't seen, that's the one I wish I had seen because mm-hmm. the I, it seems like a really interesting story to me, and I do love. Um, Sign language is a really beautiful thing. It's just, mm-hmm. my, my wife studied it for a while and I, I've known a couple of people have used it. I just wish I was one of these people who could use it if needed at any that given time. So cool. I just think it's right. a wonderful like, <laughs> language. I, I teach language anyway, so I'm really into like how language works. And language in the hands is just like, it's almost like music, isn't it? So mm-hmm. I would love to watch that. Um, so I, I'd seen Dune. I'd watched um, 15 minutes of Don't 
look up before I turned it off <laughs> and then was really surprised to see it everywhere. Um, like he's got a good publicist. I, I saw an hour of Nightmare Alley and went, oh, this is really slow. And I keep meaning to watch the, the end of Nightmare You keep meaning to watch the last six hours. <laughs> um, Power of the Dog, I watched an hour, didn't like what I saw, might watch the end. But I mean, for me, West Side Story, I mean, I hate to be predictable. I wish West, West Side Story um, had one best picture because That's it's fair. just... It, as a movie, as a as a colorful visual experience, that mm-hmm. that would have worked for me. I can understand that. So, just really quickly, my relationship with Coda, right? Oh, are you guys there? You guys look frozen. Shit. I lost connection and I'm back now. Unfortunately, the team from Awesome Friday had to jump off, um, but uh, but we're going to go ahead and wrap it up pretty quickly. Uh, but the uh, I wanted to really quickly talk about my relationship with Coda because it as a journalist that has um, spent the last couple of years going through film festivals and watching movies. Um, you know, uh, when they di- when they make their world world premiere, it has been so cool to kind of see the path that a lot of these movies take into the mainstream. And Coda, Coda is one that I that I saw at Sundance when it world premiered, um, and it had a lot of buzz at Sundance. And I watched it and then published a less than stellar review about. <laughs> I actually was not very stoked about Coda when it first came out. And you can actually, you can find my review on Movies for Real. I haven't changed it. It's still there. It's still mixed in my feelings. And I think a lot of how I felt about Coda is that it it brought this element of like music and singing into it that made it feel like it should have been a musical. Um, mm-hmm. And I would have liked it as a musical, but they didn't embrace that, um, which it's fine for what it was, but I, I guess I would have just really have liked for it to have embraced that identity. And I made that clear in my review. So when I first watched Coda, it was a very mixed feeling about it. Um, but what's so cool is being a journalist who watched the, the film when it first released, watched a year of it doing film festivals and gathering buzz and, and making it impact, getting picked up by Apple, watching its journey from Sundance to the Oscars. Like that's such a cool thing to have been a part of um, as, as a journalist. And even though I, I would have preferred different creative choices with the narrative and the style of film that it was, um, when it won its second Oscar at, at, uh, at the Academy Awards, I'm like, all right, I'm cool if this movie wins Best Picture. Right? Mm-hmm. So that's my relationship with the film. I don't know, Todd. Uh, what 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 did you think about Coda winning Best Picture? I was uh, very much in line with with Matt. Where I I thought for what it was, it was really really excellent. Where mm-hmm. where I came down when I was kind of doing my prediction and filling out my unofficial ballot was the relationship that the Oscars have had with film has changed a lot. And I loved Coda. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they're ever going to stop making films like mm-hmm. Coda. Coda is very much a feel-good movie. It's very much yes. a Sundance movie. Like it's yes, it a is. soup. Yep. It has Sundance written all over it. And that's not <laughs> just because it won at Sundance. They're mm-hmm. never going to stop making those movies. I, I think I really wanted the Academy to recognize, you know, the reason I picked The Power of the Dog, which is not because it's my favorite, and not because I actually think it's the best. Like I do think, I, I know we're agreed on this, that Drive My Car was the best movie yes. of, of those nominees. Mm-hmm. I would have liked Drive My Car winning, obviously, but I would have really liked Power of the Dog because I like what Netflix did. And Netflix has been doing this for years and that they've just been giving a blank check to, in this case, Jane Campion. They gave one up on to Corona. Like, mm-hmm. I, I like the idea that they're just like, yeah, you make a movie, we're going to try to sell it and get a ton of awards. And that's just, if that's the future of cinema, then so be it. Mm-hmm. That's definitely better than Jane Campion, who would seem like really like given up on maybe making films again, mm-hmm. just not making films. Like, I, I hate that. I hate, I hate that we could live in a world where Jane Campion's like, uh, no studio wants to back exactly what I want to do. Right. So 
just I'm not going to do it. And mm -hmm. there's definitely a one for me, one for them situation that always been going on in, in film, but seems to be getting more and more prevalent where it's like David Lowry can make the Green Knight, but first he has to make whatever that Disney CGI movie was that nobody saw. And it's just, <laughs> I don't know, let, let Netflix give <laughs> David Lowry a check and be like, hey, go make whatever you want. Right. And so I'm happy Coda won. I, I, I loved Coda. I thought it was a great movie for exactly what it was. I, I do think it's been really interesting to see it uh, go from Sundance to the Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. The fact that, you know, it was one of only three movies tonight to win more than one award. It yeah, Dune, how wild is that? Dune, Coda, <laughs> and the Eyes of Tammy Faye are the only two that won more than one award, which is crazy. And the Eyes of Tammy Faye shouldn't have won, I, I don't think, should have won one award. Like, that's yeah. wild. <laughs> it's just, it's really nuts. So, like, I, I like Coda. It's not the worst Best Picture nominee, yes, or Best Picture true. winner, rather, of the last mm -hmm. five years, even. Right. Um, the green book comparisons are way out of line. Everyone's way out of line on that. But, <laughs> but yeah, it, it probably shouldn't have been Coda. But it, right. You know, and more people are going to see Coda because of that. And I think uh, that is really good, not just for the movie and for those kind of small independent filmmakers, but also for obviously the deaf community. And, and that's really important too. So if there's there's some positives, hopefully, that come out Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. And that's that's the biggest thing about the Oscar. And I guess I'll end on this note where the Oscars, no matter what we expect or what we hope for, or what our ambitions are for who should win Oscars, the, the things that win, or even the nominees, this is a boost to their career. This is a boost mm -hmm. for their filmmaking, right? And even just being nominated is a credit that can go forward for any of these cast crew directors filmmakers um to hopefully um be able to use this as a launching pad or even a a boost to their career and i i hope that everything that got recognized tonight everything that even everything that, did, that didn't get recognized flee um <laughs> Um, I hope that these filmmakers continue going forward, making great film and using this Oscar night as a boost to their career um, mm -hmm. it, so, so that they can continue making great film. Um, that, that's really the biggest thing for me. And I'm, I'm happy that everything that won now has an additional credit to, um, to continue furthering and improving the filmmaking and storytelling that that maybe they'll be doing in the future so i yeah. you know as as a marketer that's that's something that resonates with me that's something that that i think about and that i value in the oscars even if i don't agree <laughs> with everything yeah i don't agree with most things i do know that the oscar that being just being nominated is a marketing opportunity and i hope that they're using these marketing opportunities to their to their benefit yeah, the Academy is at its best when it's promoting film and mm -hmm. it gets to, uh, you know, be a benefit to film as a, as a whole. And yeah. the Academy will be okay as long as they keep doing that. And exactly. Hopefully tonight only one career was really <laughs> blemished. Yes, only only one. <laughs> only one. And maybe he can find a way to, to remedy that. We'll, we'll yeah, see when how he that... And, when he and Chris Rock host <laughs> together next year, the, the on the four categories they present live at the oscars <laughs> then everything will be okay exactly exactly so we'll we will see how that goes but mm -hmm. for now we're going to go ahead and wrap up this conversation um unfortunately my connection cut out and so um some friends of ours dropped off but i do want to go ahead and plug really quickly uh matthew simpson and uh and simon best at awesome friday dot uh awesome friday which you can find at awesome friday dot ca um they have great articles there about the latest movies and film festivals and everything so definitely check out uh awesome friday uh dot ca uh out of vancouver um, and here we have um, for real writer Todd, um, and he has he's always putting out great content as well. He's uh, definitely has a high frequency of, of reviews coming out. So um, yeah. definitely check out his content at moviesforreal.net. For real, of course, spelled F O R R E E L. Um, and uh, and I, I don't know, Todd. Is there anything else that you want to plug? I guess since you're here. Uh no go see the outfit 
go see don't, the outfit yes your your review about the outfit is now published on uh yeah. on the website so um keep going yeah. to movies that's the only thing to plug right Just watch yeah movies. exactly honestly so i edited your review and uh and i kind of want to see the outfit now like i knew about it and i was, yeah. it was on my radar but then i read the review and i was like Oh, all right. Yeah, it was just That's... like one of those movies where I was like, I've seen the trailer so many times, and I was like, okay, I'll go see the outfit. And I was like, oh, this movie's like really good for just what it is. <laughs> it's not anything, it's not, you know, a ton right. of movies, crazy, but it's, mm-hmm. it's a good little crap movie. Awesome. Yeah. Now, now I want to watch it. So I'm probably going to do that this week. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, you you are actually the source of of some of of uh some of my really uh uh, interesting movies that I end up take, checking out. So uh, uh, glad to hear that. If you yeah. hate it, just don't tell me. Don't so. tell you. I I won't. I'll just I'll just not say anything. And we'll <laughs> move on from that. But uh, but no, you have a really good review on that. Cool. Um, you can also find my content also at moviesforreal.net for real spelled f o r r e e l. Um, you can follow me um on uh, Twitter and Instagram at being tsj. Uh, you can follow for real on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at moviesforreal.net, or sorry, at moviesforreal. Um, I'm also going to put all these links everywhere. I'll put Todd's link as well so that you can follow him uh, as well and and uh, keep up with what he's doing and talking about and, and uh, reviews he's publishing. So there's uh, there's definitely a lot of content that you can enjoy um, and, uh, and definitely check it out. So anyway, Todd, thank you for, for joining me of on, course. This, on this hey. call. Actually, it was because of it was because of you that I did this. You you said like we should do a (laughs) a conversation about this. Like we should do a podcast about it. And I'm like, I can't do a podcast, but I will get a video online. So yeah, there you go. So perfect. (laughs) So it was fun to be here. Good. I'm glad that you are here. Um, Thank you again to the to the team at Awesome Friday for joining us. And until next time, everyone out there, thank you for checking in. And uh, until next time, we'll see you then. Keep it for real.